Different health minister, same health crisis. Circle of life. Amber Jade Sanderson is starting to comprehend the size of the shit sandwich Roger Cook handed her when he couldn't be bothered chewing anymore. The latest flashpoint is this. Meet your new streamlined hospital room. Doesn't have the pesky inconvenience of walls or even curtains for that matter, so your screams of agony can echo all the way down the corridor to the nursing post. <laughs> This will only make you stronger. Which will probably be empty, cos they're all up on the mines, earning twice as much for half the work. Come bitch, bitch! The image that shows hospitals have now institutionalised treatment in corridors is a bad look for WA's newish health minister. Here's one that's even worse. <laughs> this picture was taken a few days ago at Joondalup Hospital. Eight hours and 24 minutes is the time you had to wait to see a doctor that evening. May as well have been eight days, really. Child, we are swamped. For most people, I'd say if you can sit for eight and a half hours in an ED, then you probably aren't sick enough to be there in the first place. <coughs> <coughs> I think I'm getting the black lung, Bob. But that's not all people. Imagine if you're a 99-year-old woman who had recently had a heart attack and were experiencing chest pains. You don't have much choice in the matter. And that's what happened at Joondalup, the full story is in Friday's West Australian. Like every health minister that came before her, Amber Jade is being told by the doctors and nurses that run the system that there is only one way to solve this problem. More doctors, more nurses and more beds. Yep, and you look cynical. I've heard this song before. Over. And over. It doesn't matter how many new beds we open, they will instantly be filled. Because doctors don't give a shit about capital budgets or recurrent spending. Yeah, they just want to help sick people to get better. And that's great. And if there's an empty bed, they'll put a sick person in it. Damn. Problem is, sometimes they do that, even if that person isn't really sick enough to warrant that kind of attention. You're not dying, you just can't think of anything good to do. Amber Jade, like every health minister that came before her, is being warned by the doctors and nurses that a failure to open more beds risks disaster. And if that happens, it will be on her head because everyone in the room is taking contemporaneous notes knowing they will one day be subpoenaed by the state coroner. It's a game of emotional and political blackmail that's been played for generations. This government is in the unfortunate position of not being able to buy its way out of trouble because even if it does build more hospital wards, it can't find the people to staff them. And all this is happening when we're waiting for the feel-good surprise of 2022, monkeypox. We don't know if monkeypox is born from an egg on a mountaintop or have any real idea where it did come from, but it's now a thing. And monkeypox is the latest uh, communicable and notifiable disease that uh, the Department of Health is managing in our community. The good news is we are getting vaccines, so we don't need to panic. If you've got the pox, don't be embarrassed. But don't expect your pox status to remain confidential. It probably has not escaped people in this chamber that um, we did have an unfortunate event um, over the last couple of days with a data breach. Yeah, well, that hasn't escaped anyone's attention. Quite. To her credit, Sanderson did own the problem. Uh, I un unreservedly apologise. Uh, it was a mistake. For about four seconds, and then she tried to blame Shadow Health Minister Libby Metham for the data breach becoming public. Did you advise that person that this is very sensitive information, or did you also receive that information no, and forward it on to someone you else? You are right. you are right. The Speaker of the House is Michelle Roberts. She's well qualified for the job because she was a school teacher before she was an MP, and so is well used to disciplining immature children. It's not question the opposition time, so I would ask you to perhaps phrase uh, your comments a little differently. If you're romantic enough to think the West Australian Parliament is like a high-minded scene from a political drama on TV... I'm told at this moment the House is getting ready to vote on the override of the President's veto, and I know you'll all want to cover that. Think again. And I'm asking you to apologise and withdraw. Member... You're required to apologise and withdraw without and further withdraw. comment. West Australian politics is straight out of the playground. What's an apology? Apology. Apology. I'm sorry, I have no idea how to explain apology. And these are the people running the health system. No wonder we're in trouble. I'm Ben Harvey. 
For more update, click the subscribe button below.